Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to Academic Coordinates once again. In this video, we're tackling mathematics specifically for grade 10s. You know what I'm saying? However, as I've said before, that even if you're doing grade 11 or grade 12, you are welcome to join us. Go and grab your pen and paper and let's do this mess together. You know what I'm saying? Today, we're looking at quadratic functions, you know, or they are called parabolic functions or simply parabolas. You know what I'm saying? The reason they are called... Um, um, quadratic functions is because of the highest power of x is equals to a2 if you see y is equals to x cubed or y is equals to x to the fourth then that is not a parabola in this video we're going to look at different maneuvers that are done on this function and the effect that those maneuvers have on the equation of the function you know what i'm saying um and we're going for the sake of this video we're going to limit ourselves um we're going to limit ourselves to um the vertical shift and the vertical stretch of the graph you know what I'm saying? So let's just dive right into it. You know, y is equal to ax squared plus c is the equation that we are going to use. Um, I do want to stress that usually you would find that an equation is not written as y is equal to something, but maybe it's written as, say, f of x is equal to ax squared plus c. You know, that this and this would mean the same thing because this f of x enables us to appreciate that y is a dependent variable variable and then x is an independent independent variable and also would able to appreciate that y is a function of x you know what i'm saying first of all let's look at the value of a the value of a is responsible for the vertical stretch of the graph you know we're going to look at cases where a is positive, A is greater than 0, A is positive. Okay, when the value of A is large, the graph will become narrower. When the value of A is small, the graph will be wider. Let us look this in a normal um, example. This is y and this is x. So you've got a graph like this. Let's call it graph A. And we've got a graph like this. Let's call it graph B. And also, when, when A is positive, you know, respective of the magnitude of the value of A, when A is positive, your graph will, will um, it will be all smiles. Let me just put it. It will be all smiles. All smiles. I mean, one L there. Okay. Looking at, looking at these two graphs, graph A, the graph, graph A is narrower. Let's say it's Y is equals to um, X squared. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, the greater the value of A, or the larger the value of A, the narrower the graph. Then graph B, let's say it's Y is equal to 1 over 2x squared. So a half is less than 1. So the smaller the value of A, the wider the graph. So you can see graph B is wider than graph A, you know. So that's what we mean by vertical stretch. Also, Okay, guys, I want us to note that if A is positive, the parabolic graph will be, will take this form. This is Y, this is X. If A is positive, right? And if A is negative, the graph will take this form. Um, X... The graph will face down so it's no longer smiles anymore you know okay so um let's look at an example also but for a less than zero this does not necessarily hold you know what i'm saying let's look for example um in, at this graph Let's say this is uh, graph C and this is graph D. 
Grafti. This is graph D. Um, looking at graph C, graph C, let's say graph C is Y is equals to minus half X squared, you know? And then graph D is Y is equals to minus X squared, you know? Let's say this is, this is happening, for example, you know? And looking at these two values, if the value of A is um, large, okay, if the value of A is large here, then the graph will be wider. But if the value of A is smaller, the graph will be narrower. For a less than zero. Let us look at this. Um, negative half is greater than negative one. For that reason here. You know what I'm saying? You know, so that is the effect that um, 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 the value of a have on a parabolic graph. You see? So, okay, just note this is for a less than zero and for a greater than zero. So, this is for these guys. This is for these guys right here. You see. All right. Let us continue. Let's look at the value of C. When we're dealing with linear functions, we're able to establish that the value of C is the y-intercept. You know, other words, where the graph cuts the y-axis. You know what I'm saying? So, what happens at C? C is responsible... For the vertical shift of the graph, of the parabolic graph. Let's say, for example, we've got y is equals to x squared. This y and this x. This is y is equals to x squared. But what is c? c is a zero here. So I did not include it, but you can include it if you want to include it. You know what I'm saying? So, also, the graph can be shifted down one unit, for example. This will be negative one. So, this graph will be y is equals to x squared minus one. You see? But the graph can also be shifted up. Let's say this is two. What will this graph be? This graph will be y um is equals to x squared plus 2. So, C is responsible for the vertical shift of the function. Let us do an example, you know, and then in this example, I'll be explaining um, important, important um, points or sections, you know, for graph sketching. For graph sketching right okay let us say we've got a graph of um, f of x is equals to um, 2x squared plus 3 you know let's say we've got a graph like this and then we are told to sketch the graph Obviously, you do have a, a, an option of the table method. Um, but here, we are actually going to use another approach. You know what I'm saying? The table method, I mean, you can choose values of x and values of y. Values of x. I mean, you choose values of x, obviously, which will affect the values of y. Um... Um, let's say, for example, we choose negative 2, negative 1, 0, um, 1, 2. So, for this, we are going to, okay, we are going to find the values as far as this is concerned. F of 2, F of negative 1, 
f of 0, um, f of 1, f of 2. You see? This is how you actually tackle um, a table method. Okay, if you can just do it just for interest sake, we can find these answers. f of 0, f of 0, if you guys re recall, it's going to be the y-intercept. You know what I'm saying? So this is going to be a 3 right here. Okay, we are going to look at individual points. Okay, let's say f of 1, f of 1 is 2 times 1 squared plus 3 equals... Um, 1 squared is a 1 multiplied by 2 is 2. 2 plus 3 is 5. So, um, 2 this squared plus 3. 2 squared is 4. 4 multiplied by 2 is 8. 8 plus 3 is 11. And also, this and this will be the same because of... Um, if we... Okay, let's say a squared is the same as a squared, for example. You know, so this will equal to 5, this will equal to 11. You know, then you can plot your graph based on this, you know. Um, but in this, for the sake of this video, we're actually going to look at a, a powerful tool or powerful steps that we use to actually plot um, the graph, you know what I'm saying, which I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna do it on the next video, but I would like to draw your attention guys to the points that I actually use to draw such a graph, you know, first of all, you must find your intercept, these are the points where your graph cuts either your x or your y axis, your y intercept, and then your x intercept, you know, so your y-intercept x will equal to 0. Then your your x-intercept y will equal to 0. Secondly, you know, we are going to find the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry. As we have said that for the sake of this video, we limited ourselves to... Um, we limited ourselves to vertical shifts, so the graph will not shift from the uh, y-axis. So the axis of symmetry will equal to zero. Here, this will be the axis of symmetry of the graph that we're gonna do. It's gonna be shifted vertically, right? Then three, we're gonna look at the turning point where the graph turns. The turning point, right? The turning point. And this is, for example, for example, this graph, this graph turns here. So we want this value. Okay, let's just bring this down. Let's say you are looking for this graph. Uh, the turning point is this. This is the value we are looking for, right? And so, uh, obviously here, the axis of symmetry will be involved in the turning point. So it's going to be zero. And f of zero i'm gonna tell you guys more about this on the next video on the next video then we can draw the graph and also i would like to just put in um two or three more things that we that we actually use to analyze this graph then after sketching obviously we must find the domain of the graph right and the domain is where the graph is defined where the graph or the function is defined horizontally, right? Where the function is defined either from left to right, you know, and then the range where the graph is defined, where the graph is defined, or the function is defined like vertically, where the function exists, you know what I'm saying? Um, and then, um, it's, I'm just, just, uh, um, running through this. Then also you must find, um, the maximum or the minimum of the graph. Obviously this will be the minimum. So the minimum here will be the turning, the turning point. And if your graph is like this, you will obviously look for the maximum of the graph. And then lastly, we're going to look at, um, um, 
the the values of x the values of x where the graph increases or decreases okay i don't i didn't want to make this a long video so um let's meet on the next video as we are actually going to be tackling all of these seven points and it's actually an an interesting way of sketching a graph you know table method can be used but i'm sure you learned this in grade nine or grade eight right but above all guys do stay cool and um if you're able to sketch the graph you can just tell me on the comments below what will be the turning point what will be the the domain you know or the intercept do stay cool guys enjoy the rest of your day